Hey everybody and welcome back, Patrick here. Today we're going to be taking a look at using shaders as textures. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be creating today. Okay, so essentially what this is, is a Perlin noise texture that's get animated over time and it creates kind of this like funky little energy pattern like thing. So what we have to do is figure out how we're going to go about creating it. Now I'm not going to go into t detail on writing the actual shaders themselves as that's really complex and, and it's mostly written in C, not JavaScript. So we're just going to be looking at taking um, other people's shaders that have already been written and using those for our own purposes. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to hop over to, th to the code, and we'll take a look at how we can kind of incorporate this into our scene. Now, the first thing you're going to need to be aware of is that with all shaders, you essentially have a uh, vertex shader and a fragment shader, okay? And we're going to load both the, the vertex shader and the fragment shader into our uh, main page of our, our, our thing. And we're going to put it inside of script tags, which we then document as being fragment shader. And then the type is x shader and x fragment. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing uh, for the vertex shader. Okay. The reason we're putting them in script tags is so that it, so that when your website or web page is being, uh, is being reviewed by the browser, it's actually going to ignore this information. Okay, so let's hop over to our JavaScript main file, and we'll take a look at what's going on right in here. Okay, so now the first thing that you're going to need to do is, in this case, is that we're going to create our geometries. Now, I've gone ahead and actually created a uh, buffer geometry this time around. Um, just to just so you guys could see this, okay? Essentially, all I'm doing is taking the Taurus Geo um, geometry and, and creating it into a buffer. Now I wouldn't recommend this with when you're using shaders, but I did want to show you that this method is here. This is mostly for static stuff. For example, if you were building a room and you had some static walls or something like that along that lines, you might want to stick it in the buffer because uh, stick it in as a buffer geometry because it's going to be a little bit more efficient. Now this is a little bit of a tangent. Um, it, to what we're actually going over in this lesson, but I did want to suggest that you can use this uh, if you so, so choose. So I was just kind of fiddling around with it earlier, and the reason it's incorporated in, into here is because I wanted to kind of see what kind of performance I would get or not get uh, from using a buffer geometry uh, in and a, a shader as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is create our shader material. We'll do so by using doing shader, new three dot shader material, and we're going to send through the uniforms, okay? Uniforms essentially are going to be the variables that we are able to manipulate um, and put that information back into the into the actual shader. So this is going to be kind of a, our unique way of communicating with the actual shaders themselves, okay? So we're hit, we have a uniforms object, and um, in that uniforms we have a T shine, um, which is going to be our water tile, uh, as well as the time value and the weight. Okay, so time is basically going to, uh, time is essentially going to, uh, is going to be the number that tells us, that animates everything. Okay, and the other thing we're going to need to do is actually call our vertex shader, and we're going to do so by you using the function document dot get elements by ID vertex shader and then we're going to pull all of the information from over here and we're going to stick it right back into our shader right over here okay so that's how we could, we would go about it uh, the next thing we need to do is hop into the shader material uniforms and we're going to set this tile texture this water tech tile uh, to be to repeat on the s and t uh, essentially, basically, that's just going to in, is going to tile our texture <clears throat> and wrap it around everything. And since we are using standard three dot JS objects, they already have the uni u the UVs calculated and built in. With <clears throat> so, if you actually take a look over at our shader, you will see that when it says the VUV varying vector. That's actually from 3.js as well as the, as well as the normal, um, <clears throat> and that's going to basically put our tile uh, onto that and map it around. So 
it'll look very nice and uniform as to whatever shape that we end up using. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so moving on, we're gonna, in this case, we're gonna make our material double-sided, um, and then we're gonna stick everything in there. Again, we can use the, the torus geo or the buffer geo as well in here um, for, for our purposes, okay? And then the next thing I'm gonna do is just slightly rotate the torus so that, and put it into the correct position so that it fits in everything. Okay, uh, the, also what I'm going to do is actually use the clone method, uh, which is a object 3D, oh, I'm sorry, a mesh method, uh, and that's going to basically create a clone, so clone our object three times, and then we'll just set the positioning um, on that. Okay, and then I'm just using this, the JSON loader again, to load up kind of this little like, I don't know what it would you would call it, like power supply box basically. That's gonna basically be just another little piece that's in that that is in there. Alright, then finally with our render function that we're going to be um, we're gonna be basically animating it and we're gonna send the time um, into the uh, shader material uniforms and this is going to basically add, render everything out. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward on that end. The next thing we need to look at is just so you guys are a little, understand these things a little bit better. Um, why don't we take a look at the vector two um, varying? Okay, varying basically means that this information is shared between the fragment shader and the vertex shader. All right. So you have your UV maps that are shared between the two, as well as your normals, and then the reflection, okay? The uniform, again, is, is anything that uh, pertains to something that is being shared with the JavaScript or variables that are being pushed between them. In this case, it just happens to be we have our image, we have the time, we have a little bit of an ambient occlusion uh, as varying, okay? so. That's pretty much it. Again, you can find these uh, shaders all over the internet. Uh, I recommend just kind of playing around with them and fiddling with them. Anyways, I'm going to hop back over here and show you this demo again, just so you guys can see it. And we're going to kind of end on that note. Thank you again for tuning in. Uh, again, I'm going to post the code so you guys can take a look at it. I recommend just kind of um, going out, looking to see all the different shaders that are available in a WebGL environment, and going ahead and just kind of fiddling with those for the time being. Uh, any In any event, <laughs> thank you again for tuning in, and hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Hey.